A recent survey by Solitaire Bliss looked at over a thousand American workers about how they coped with boredom at work, and they found that over a third said they knew their job would be boring when they started. They are bored for about a quarter of the average work day. In office workers tend to feel more bored than their hybrid counterparts. And when bored, 62% of employees work slower or engage in unnecessary tasks to pass the time. Most interestingly, 57% of bosses are aware of this frequent boredom, but as long as the work is completed, these bosses don't intervene. I talk a lot about a phenomenon called rust out, and this came into the psychological literature after Paula Coles, a psychotherapist, coined the term. She used it to describe people who just felt apathetic, disinterested, bored with their work. And the problem is, in the same way as burnout can affect productivity, so too can rust out. Now, the question I have here is, are 57% of the bosses who aren't doing anything about it actually just not bothered themselves? Perhaps they too are rusted out. Perhaps they too are bored. Or is it they simply don't know what to do? When it comes to dealing with burnout, it's a lot easier to say, well, you can manage your stress, you can build your resilience, we can offer you counselling, and so on. But when it comes to rust out, we actually need to push you a little bit further. So here are a couple of tips. Number one, think about how to stretch your workforce. Do they want to take a secondment? Do they want to learn more? Do they want to go on training? Perhaps what they're doing now isn't suited or aligned with their goals anymore. Have those conversations and see what's on offer in the working environment to do something about it. The second tip is do not confuse strengths and skills. What I find when I work with clients and I deliver training is that many people get promoted on their skills. Skills are things we're very good at, but we learn them, we feel exhausted by them, they take a lot of effort to deal with. So as an example, one of my skills is organisation. I'm really, really good at it. All my friends ask me to organise, but I really dislike it. It's not my thing at all, even though I'm really good at it. And so getting a job which only involves organizations, such as perhaps event management, which I did to start with, would not suit me long term. One of my strengths, however, and I hope you agree, is presenting, speaking, talking, and therefore teaching was a much better fit for me. It's what I qualified as, and it's something I still enjoy and still engage with. So don't confuse your skills and strengths. Skills are things you can get very good at, but they exhaust you. Strengths are things you can also improve at, but they energize you. So when you think about those two, make a list of both and try and find work that pushes you and stretches you on your strengths. I'll be back with more data next time.